<laughs> Great. And could the rest of us please uh, have page 846 open in front of us? Uh, that will get you to Mark chapter 10. We've been looking, as Sam says, at Mark's gospel all this week, and we're going to have a look at a different bit, guys, this morning from Mark chapter 10. So have yourselves a seat, and uh, I'm going to pray and ask God uh, just to help us uh, speak to us from his word, the Bible, this morning. So let's close our eyes and listen as I say this prayer. Father God, thank you uh, for your word. Thank you that you've been speaking to us all week from Mark's gospel, and we pray that you'd help us to pay attention uh, to what Jesus has to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm going to need a volunteer uh, to help me with this first bit uh, today, and I'm going to ask this lady here, who was dressed as a unicorn on Friday, or whenever it was, thank you very much. One pointless. I know, and you won pointless. Well, I've got another game for you today. What's your real and proper name? It's not unicorn, is it? What is it? Alicia Elizabeth. Alicia, right. Elizabeth. Okay. Alicia Elizabeth. Slight, se slight sense of terror already. Right, Elise Alicia Elizabeth. Okay, as you can see, we've got three boxes in front of us. I wonder whether you have ever heard of a game show on TV. You may have watched it many times called Deal or No Deal. Yes? No? No? Never seen it? Oh, no. Well, actually, it doesn't particularly matter because on the budget that we're working to today, this is going to bear no resemblance, whatever, to the real thing. Um, it's very, very simple. Um, uh, you've got three boxes in front of you. You've got a blue one, a yellow one, and a red one. And in each of those boxes, there is a chocolate bar. There is a bar of Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate. Oh, yes, there is. Yes. Now you're with me, aren't you? And... Here's the game. Well, you wait and see. Let me explain the rules. So all that's going to happen is I'm going to ask you in a second to choose the red, the yellow, or the blue box, and you get to keep the chocolate bar that is inside that box. Simple as that. All right, so think carefully. Which one are you going to go for? Mm -hmm. The yellow one. Right, okay, so let's open the yellow box and see what's inside. Oh! Ah, wow, very good. Okay, so that's very simple. The only thing I didn't tell you was that all the chocolate bars are different sizes. So look at that chocolate bar. A big one. Uh, you think that's a big chocolate bar, do you? Okay. Pop that bucket back in there. No. no, 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 no. Hold on to your box. That's yours. Hold on really tight to that box. Okay. But I'm going to do a deal with you, hence the title of the game. I'm going to do a deal with you. You can swap, if you want, your yellow box for either the red or the blue box, and you might get a bigger bar of chocolate. It might be smaller, but it will be different to that one. So, are you going to hold on to your yellow box and have that bar of chocolate in there, or are you going to see, uh, are you going to swap it for the red or the blue one? What do you think? think You're going to hold on tight to that one there. Okay, let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> you can have that, but but on the condition that you wait until your grown-up says you can eat the chocolate. Not now, all right? Because you're going to make a right mess of the carpet if you do that, right? Go on then, have a sit down. Well done. Now, something a bit like that was happening in the uh, bit from uh, Mark's Gospel that we read earlier on. You see, there we meet a man uh, who actually wanted something bigger, but a bit like Alicia Elizabeth, uh, was holding on tight to what he had and wouldn't swap it for the thing that was actually more valuable. Because if you'd have opened the blue one, ooh, you could have had that one there, you see. Mm. So, let us see what happens. Let me explain what I mean. I need, listen guys, I need two more volunteers, not for chocolate, <laughs> two more volunteers. This is, this is for the serious bit, all right, okay. Uh, let's have one. And let's have, actually, let's have uh, two. Yeah, do you want to come up? Okay, great. Okay, fabulous. So, 
you are going to pretend to be Jesus for us, okay? So I'm going to put a badge on you that says Jesus, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to uh, go and stand on the stage for us and pretend to be Jesus, just up there, that you get to use the Crumbling Towers Hotel stage. Brilliant. And you are going to pretend to be the man. Now, unfortunately, Mark doesn't tell us your name, so you're not going to get a badge. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, Mark does tell us lots about him. He tells us that, let's use this yellow box, hold on to your, tight to your yellow box, tells us that the man was very, very rich. Very rich. There's lots of money, not real. That goes in there. And if it had been nowadays, he probably would have had a really fancy car. Oh, yes. And he probably would have had a great big house in the posh end of Gosforth or Jesmond or Pontealand or somewhere like that. And he probably would have gone on really expensive holidays to really upmarket places like the Maldives probably a few times a year. So he had all that stuff. He was very, very rich. But he was also someone that if you met him, you would probably say, he's a good person. So he was never in trouble with the police. He probably said all his pleases and thank yous at the right time. He was probably in all the top sets at school, yes, in, in, in his classes at school. Uh, and in general, he was just uh, a respectable person. And as if that wasn't enough, he was also very religious. So he was very good at keeping all the religious rules. So he was rich and a good person. Wow, impressive, huh? Now, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of action uh, to show you this morning. Uh, not a lot of action for you two to do. Uh, all that happens, actually, is this. So, Mr. Mann, could you go down the side there and down that aisle over there until I tell you to stop? Pass Rebecca Jones. Keep going. 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 And stop right there. Right. All that happens is this. He ran up to Jesus... He ran up to Jesus, being careful you don't trip over, don't trip over my guitar cable, up onto the stage, he ran up to Jesus and fell down on his knees, and then he asked him a question, and Jesus gave him an answer. That's it. Sorry about that, not very exciting. Except, except that the question that this man asked is probably the most important question he could ever ask, and the most important question that any of us could ever ask. And the answer that Jesus gives him is the most important answer we could ever, ever listen to. And here is the great big question. So, man, with a very big voice, read the question for us. What must I do to get eternal life? Well done. What must I do to get eternal life? That is a big question, isn't it? So he wants to know what he needs to do to deserve to get eternal life. What does he need to do to deserve life forever with God in heaven? Forever. So let's imagine that this box here, I'm going to take the big box, a uh, big bar of chocolate out of there. Let's imagine that this box here, the blue one, contains, there it is, eternal life. All right? That's what he's after. That's what he's after. And he wants to know how to get hold of this. And he's got hold of, tightly, his yellow box containing all of his money and his stuff. And he wants to know how to get this. But isn't that interesting? I mean, we thought he was really good and really religious and really respectable as well as rich. So why is he asking, what must I do to deserve eternal life? He's asking that question because he doesn't know the answer. So he's thinking inside this, am I good enough? Am I good enough? In other words, I've done lots of good things, but have I done enough good things to deserve life forever with God? Hmm. And maybe you're thinking the same thing. Maybe you're thinking, look, I really want to be in a place after this life where there is no frustration, where there's no pain, where there's no death, where there's no suffering, where there's no irritating people. I want to be in heaven forever, in a place that's perfect forever. But have I done enough good stuff? Or maybe 
you're asking the opposite question. And you're thinking, I'm too bad. You know, I've done so many bad things that I couldn't possibly deserve life forever with God in heaven. Or, or how do I do enough good things to make up for those bad things? Hmm. Well, those were the questions, uh, and that's a really big, important question, isn't it? So, what did Jesus, this is your big moment, person who's pretending to be Jesus, what, is, what are the things that Jesus says to him? Well, Jesus says three massive things to him, and with a really big voice, you tell him the first thing. You're not good. You are not good. Oh, ouch. Ouch. That's a bit nasty, Jesus. That's not very um, politically correct nowadays, is it? You're not good? Well, he thought he was a really good person. Jesus says, no, you're not good. Here it is in verse 18. No one is good except God alone. Because he thinks he's good. In fact, when Jesus asked him about things like stealing and murder and lying and adultery, he confidently says to Jesus, well, I've kept all those rules since I was a little boy. Check you out. And Jesus says, no, you're not good. Only God is good. Which is a bit like, do you remember, guys, um, the Pharisees on uh, Tuesday when we were thinking about Levi and the Pharisees, Levi the tax collector? The Pharisees were so proud of how they kept the religious rules. They were the good people. And people like Levi, they were the bad people, the sinners. But the Bible tells us clearly, guys, that we have all offended God. We're all sinners from birth. You know, whether that's just out of weakness or whether it's because we deliberately say, no, I know which way you want me to go, God, but shove off. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to go my way. We're all sinners. And that's a big problem because God is good. He's perfect. And he can't have us with us forever. It separates us from him. That's sin. We're not good. And actually, Jesus was spot on, wasn't he? Because this guy, he was so absorbed in his own stuff. He loved his stuff more than he loved God. And Jesus saw that. So here's the second thing that Jesus says to him. That was the first one. The second thing with a big voice is... Repent. repent, says Jesus. Yes. So repent means this. So let me just hold on to this box for a second. I become man. I become and come down here. So let's imagine you're walking in that direction. And then you turn around and you come back in this direction. Right. That's what repenting means. Hold on to your box. It's very important to hold on to that. That's what it means in the Bible. To turn around and go the other way. Go God's way. Here it is in verse 21. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor. You see, it's not that all this stuff in the box uh, is bad in itself. The problem is, is that the man loves it. He worships it. He loves that stuff more than he loves God. And the third thing that uh, Jesus said to him, with a big voice, is... Follow me. Follow me. Yes. In other words, put your uh, trust in me, says Jesus. Here it is. Then come, follow me. That's verse uh, 21 again. In other words, Jesus says, look, follow me, become a Christian. Become a follower of me. But why? How on earth can doing that give him what's in this blue box? Well, do you remember on Wednesday how we found out that when Jesus died on the cross, he was paying the price to take the punishment that we deserve for our sin so that we can be forgiven? Jesus took our sin on himself, and that means we can be made clean from our sin. Whether I think I'm good enough to deserve uh, eternal life or whether I think I'm too bad to deserve it, Jesus has paid the price. Your sin can be forgiven. It's not about what you can do. The Bible's clear. It's about what Jesus has already done for us. And then on Thursday, guys, do you remember uh, how we found out that Jesus didn't stay dead, but he came back alive again? And all those hundreds of people saw him before he went back up to be with his Father God in heaven. 
And if Jesus can defeat death and, and give himself life forever, then he can give us life forever as well. And just like that rich young man, we need to realize that we are not good. We need to turn away from our sin, repent, and put our trust in what Jesus has done, not what we think we can do. So, that's great, isn't it? I bet that's what happened. I bet that uh, the man, who will remain nameless because you don't have a name, swapped his yellow box full of all that stuff for the blue box with eternal life in it, didn't he? That's what he did. No. No, he didn't. He held on tight to his stuff. Look at this, verse 22. He went, he, that's the man, went away sad because he had great wealth. He wasn't prepared to let go of that and swap it for what's in here. That's really sad, isn't it? Isn't it? Let's give these guys a round of applause as they sit down. Thank you very much. You've done a great job. Well done. You've been working really hard this morning. Thank you both. So, I wonder, is there something that you're holding on tight to? You know, maybe you've heard, you've heard about Jesus, you've heard what he's done for you. Uh, and you still just want to hold on to your possessions, your money, your power, your pleasure, your education, your reputation. Well, we would love to keep telling you more about Jesus and what he's done for you so that you can have eternal life. Don't walk away from Jesus like that man did. And let's uh, finish with a prayer, shall we? So let's close our eyes and pray. Father God, thank you for all that Jesus has done for us. Help each one of us to realize that we are sinners, to repent of our sin and to follow Jesus as our living King. In his name, amen.